Shalom, dear friends. You're watching ITON TV channel, and this is Health is a Blessing That Money Cannot Buy show. My name is Ziv Zilber, and I can't wait to introduce my guests. One of our guests is Professor Shmuel Livet, the head of endocrinology and Diabetology Institute of Asuta Medical Center in Tel Aviv, and Professor of Kassan Research and Development Technology Center. Shalom, how do you do? How do you do? And also Professor Shimon Slavin is sitting next to me. He is the Scientific and Medical Director of Biotherapy International Company and Cancer Immunotherapy and Cell Therapy Center. Shalom. Today we'll talk about diabetes, and we will start with Dr. Levitt. Let's start with the basics. I will just say that in the past, diabetes was considered as an incurable, irreversible disease. And today, a lot of diabetic patients embrace hope and life, hoping that healing is possible. So let's start from the basics. What is diabetes mellitus, and how has the approach to diabetes mellitus treating changed? To understand what we're talking about, I have to mention that my colleagues and I have predicted the revolution in diabetology around 10 years ago. We have not only predicted the curability of diabetes mellitus, type 2, that is, diabetes in older adults, but also quick curability of that type of diabetes in some cases, and no need for insulin injections for most of the patients with type 2 diabetes. We have almost gone through the Lynch Law at that time because our words were considered as nonsense. Today, the only lazy among those who criticized and pecked us doesn't go on the stage and repeat our words. If we talk about type 1 diabetes, this is around 10% of all the diabetes cases. The situation here is more complex. Now, if we open a course book or an article, we will see that the disease is considered as incurable and irreversible. Furthermore, the only therapy for treating that type of diabetes is insulin injection. I would like to tell the story of it in two words. In 1921, Banting and Best invented insulin and started to use it as a treatment. Before that time, all those poor young men and women and children with type 1 diabetes, also called juvenile diabetes, had a very heavy fate. All of them perished of inanition and acidosis. This is excess of acid in the blood. When I reread their story, I understood that they perished not in a moment. The main conception today assumes that type 1 diabetes or juvenile diabetes is an attack on the pancreatic gland by one's own immune system. The pancreatic gland and its endocrine part is destructed by the immune system. The disease is irreversible and incurable, and insulin is the only possible drug. Soon, literally, in two years, we will celebrate a century of insulin use. What is interesting is that we have predicted that the insulin era is ending. It has ended already if we talk about the type 2 diabetes. And it will end for type 1 diabetes too, because we have totally changed the concept. Let me shortly explain our concept. According to the concept, type 1 diabetes is a more complex disease, and it is some kind of brain tissue nervous disorder. Because recently it was found that, firstly, even in the case with patients who have been having one, a type 1 diabetes, we still find it in their blood and tissues, healthy beta cells that can produce insulin. This is amazing news that refutes existed concepts. Secondly, it was found that islets of Langerhans cells, those cells that are located in the pancreatic gland, they include both beta cells producing insula, alpha cells producing glucagon, and cells that produce somosotatin, etc. 
All those cells are neural at their core. If we put together all neurons, and neurons are neural cells, located in the gastrointestinal tract, their total weight will be around 700 grams. So, it's our second brain. And my gut tells me expression is based on the fact that was recently proven. We have the second brain in our gastrointestinal tract. Diabetes is brain tissue disease. Now, when we have that conclusion, we understood that immune system can be only a trigger that is followed by deregulation of all islets of Langehan cells that can result in a functional paralysis of those cells. The functional paralysis is the cause of the lack of insulin, but that doesn't mean that those cells die. They are alive in most of the patients for many years. Then we prescribe a therapy that, in our opinion, could help, and it did. We consolidated data. We studied around 20 patients that tried our therapy. We call it regenerative therapy. It includes anti-inflammatory medication and two medication initiating regeneration. All those medications are taken simultaneously. Results were amazing. The need for insulin decreased by 60%. Some patients gave over insulin injections, so we have proved our conception. This is the regenerative therapy. On the question about future treatment for type 1 diabetes, I always answered that I see it in the high technologies, pumps, sensory elements, etc. I've been working in that area for the last 30 years, and I believe in high technology. But today, the regenerative therapy steps forward. Let's talk about one more method of treatment. It was the hottest new trend around 15 years ago, but now is referred to with a pinch of salt. And I'm talking about the treatment with stem cells called cell therapy. How is cell therapy related to future treatment of diabetes? The question is for Dr. Slavin. Diabetes mellitus is not one disease. It's two different diseases. One of them the type 1, and the other one is type 2. So we cannot talk about one treatment for all diabetes. So let's start talking about type 1 diabetes, which is the more severe form of diabetes with more late complications. Uh, the problem is an autoimmune attack against the islets in the pancreas that secrete insulin. So the first thing that we will have to do if we want to cure diabetes in the future, not yet unfortunately, but we are tr aiming to go there, is to stop the autoimmune process. In other words, to block the self-reacting lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are the cells of the immune system that attack the pancreas. The second uh, stage would be to induce, uh, to induce cells that will secrete insulin. In other words, first of all, we have to stop the cause of the disease, but then we have to provide cells that can secrete insulin. So the ideal situation, not yet available, but we are working on it, and we hope eventually it will work, is to use multipotent stem cells cells that are now called mesenchymal stromal cells, cells you can get easily from everyone, from the fat tissue, from the bone marrow, or maybe best from placenta and cord tissue as soon as the baby is born. Now these cells are multipotent and they can be differentiated into cells that resemble every tissue. So if we can differentiate them into insulin secreting cells of the patient himself, that would be the ideal situation. And then we could use these cells as insulin producing cells, while in parallel using the mesenchymal stromal cells, the stem cells that was used to create them, to downregulate the autoimmune process because the mesenchymal stromal cells, the same cells that can be differentiated uh, to insulin secreting cells can downregulate or suppress the autoimmune reaction. 
So in, in theory, the same cells can stop the disease process and eventually when we know how to differentiate them well enough to secrete insulin. And we have some ongoing experiments that suggest that such cells can secrete insulin, but it's not yet in an amount that would justify a clinical trial. I remember the time when cell therapy was considered as a cure-all solution. It then was found that it caused cancer in some cases. Absolutely not, because uh, there's a big, uh, a lot of confusion in the public. When you say stem cells, it's not just one cell, there are different types of stem cells. So embryonic stem cells, in other words, cells that are obtained from an embryo, the, the first uh, week or two when the cells start to differentiate after fertilization of the egg, this is called embryonic stem cell. That cell is certainly dangerous. If you put it, for example, in animals under the kidney capsule, it will always develop into cancer. So embryonic stem cells can develop cancer and therefore should not be used at present uh, under no circumstances. In the future, people are thinking how to teach them to become whatever they want, but not at the present time. However, when we talk about stem cells, these are stem cells that are sometimes called adult stem cells. The, the better name is postnatal stem cells. You know, these are stem cells that you can isolate after the baby is born. The earliest stem cells is the placenta or the core tissue, and these cells do not cause cancer. In fact, some, cells, some studies suggest that they may be used to treat cancer. So we have to differentiate between uh, embryonic stem cells that are dangerous and adult stem cells or postnatal stem cells that are 100% safe. Uh, Professor Levitt, please join our discussion. What do you think about stem cell therapy? Or broadly speaking, how do you see the future treatment of diabetes? Do you see it in stem cells or any other cells? In recent years, I have wholeheartedly believed in regeneration. If you ask me about the future treatment of diabetes five years ago, I would answer that it was in high technologies only. I mean, an artificial pancreas, sensor therapy, pumps, etc. Today, our tests and research, as well as our clinical experience, show that we can achieve regeneration. We're talking about a disease that can recede if treated with regenerative components. I see the stem cell treatment as the last piece of the puzzle of treatment and healing of type 1 diabetes. I can't guarantee the results, but I feel that intuitively, and my feeling is based on a short clinical experience. However, I wholeheartedly believe in stem cells, being immunomodulatory cells that normalize immune system response, the ideal natural immunomodulatory factor. At the same time, can be differentiated or redifferentiated in beta cells or insulin producing cells. So, here we kill two birds with one stone. Therefore, I want to notice that, firstly, according to our conception, there are no incurable autoimmune diseases, and we can help in some cases, and Professor Slavin agrees with it. Professor Slavin proves that on other autoimmune disorders, I'm trying to prove that on type 1 diabetes. And in my opinion, stem cell therapy is an ultimate treatment for type 1 diabetes. This is amazing. And my last question to you is how widely those revolutionary methods are used in Israeli practice. Can an ordinary Israeli citizen or a guest from our country get the treatment? Well, uh, unfortunately not because uh, the Ministry of Health decided uh, not to uh, allow 
treatment with cells that are processed outside patient's body, which I think is a mistake, but that is the law, and uh, therefore we cannot do it. So in principle, cell therapy at present, as I said, can be used theoretically to suppress the immune system, not yet to cure type 1 diabetes, although we think that will be the future. So in order to suppress the immune system, it makes no sense to suppress the immune system if there are no cells that can produce insulin. And therefore, we think that the use of stem cells to suppress the immune system or to regulate the immune system, without side effects, by the way, uh, would be in early case type 1 diabetes where there still is islets, pancreatic reserve. And therefore, the hope is that if we can stop the immune system from further killing them all at an early stage, the so-called honeymoon period, at that stage, it makes sense to start to, to stop the autoimmune process because then maybe the pancreas will have some, some option to recover and to build up additional stem cells and to modify or possibly even to, 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 to do major, you know, uh, I don't want to say cure, but it's a major improvement of the clinical condition. Also, if you stop the autoimmune process, and this is also true for type 2 diabetes, because there are some immune parameters we did not yet discuss type 2. Type 2 is a different disease, but there are some immunological uh, reactions going on in type 2, and we believe that the use of multipotent stem cells can modify the autoimmune process also in type 2 diabetes, maybe improve the vascular complications uh, etc. So to answer your question, no, not in Israel, but it can be done under experimental conditions as a compassionate treatment, either to do it in countries where cell therapy is allowed through consultation with us, or to apply to the Ministry of uh, Health and see if they would allow a certain case based on compassionate basis as an experimental protocol. Dr. Shmuel, please answer to the same question. I totally agree with Professor Slavin, and I just want to add that it's extremely important to save at least a part of active beta cells. Recently, research shows that if we save a minuscule portion of our own beta cells that can produce our own insulin, we rid a child, a young adult, or a patient with type 1 diabetes of future complications. This is a highly interdependent process. Our goal is to rid our patient of complications and to achieve remission of diabetes. Professor Slavin named a diabetes honeymoon. Why it is called a honeymoon? Because it lasts one month, we prescribe insulin, and it looks like the patient is healed. It shows that those cells that were blocked begin to revive. But we can't stop the process, and it starts again. So our goal, and the goal can be achieved, is to turn the honeymoon into a honey year, honey ten years, etc. I think it's possible. At least our experience says that we can achieve that result. Thank you very much, Professor Levitt and Professor Slavin. Thank you very much for participating in our show. Dear friends, you hear this firsthand. Like the video, share it. Certainly it can be useful for one of your friends. See you again on ITON TV channel.